Hello fellow pilots of EVE Online. Today I'm going to be going over the Ratting Gullum Fit slash PvP if need be. <laughs> Alright, so let's go ahead. I'm going to go over the fitting and then I'm going to go just do some quick ratting and stuff. Uh, just so you guys can see what it looks like in the field and sh maybe show you a couple tips while you're out on the field. So, today we have a large Warhead Raker Catalyst 1. We have a large Warhead uh, Kale Faction. I don't know how to fucking say it, but uh, Kale Faction Catalyst 2. Sorry. Uh, Cruise Missile Launcher 2 times 4. And right now I have the precisions loaded, but you're not going to be riding with the precisions. Uh, I'll, sh I'll show you what those are for after. Uh, Bastion Module 1, obviously. Uh, Auto-targeting systems, always nice to have. Uh, and the Shockwave... Yeah, so just two Smart Bombs, doesn't really matter what they are. Uh, just make sure you have two Smart Bombs, preferably Tech 1s, because you're going to be playing with some CPU here. Um, now. You don't have to have two smart bombs. The reason I have two smart bombs right now is because I really, really don't like drones. Okay, I hate drones. Uh, I also really dislike Hecates. Okay, I don't like Hecates um, or Hecates, however you pronounce them. And I also dislike fighters. Now, of course, if you want to kill fighters, you're better off putting faction on here that hit out to 7,500. But I think these can hit fighters like light fighters and I really don't like fighters so that's why I have two of those it's up to you you can put a um, uh, let's see a neutralizer up here if you want to mess with this fit but uh, I don't think you have enough CPU to actually contemplate on putting a heavy up here the heavies take up quite a bit but uh, yeah so that's why I have two smart bombs um, sorry I'm kind of a I'm kind of a smart bomb fanatic if you watch my other videos so uh, missile Guidance Computer 2s, you're going to want to have two of those with the Precision Scripts, as well as the Missile Guidance Enhancer 2. Reason for that in the low slot is because four of these doesn't really give you anything. So you just want to have one of those and two of these, and that way you can hit frigates when they come to gank you. Fun, right? Yeah, I'll tell you. So that's why the Precisions are in there. Because if you look at the stats here, just quickly go over this. Yeah, so they fly at almost 13 thousand meters per second which means you can hit everything like everything there's nothing in the game that you can't hit um, now application is a different story but uh, max light time 11 seconds yeah okay it doesn't matter um, explosion velocity right 200 which is fairly good for a cruise missile and explosion radius which is 152 so that means that anything that's at 152 um, sig radius which if you didn't know, is this number here? That's your sig radius. You're gonna apply max damage to. Uh, as far as the reduction for sig radius, now there are there is a reduction for 200, for 200 meters. So anything going over 200 meters is gonna take reduced damage, right? Uh, anything under 152 meters is gonna take reduced damage. Now I'm gonna tell you why the radius isn't really a big deal. Now you're gonna say yes, but frigates are smaller than that. Well, not when they have a micro warp drive. Anybody that's going up against a missile boat is going to have their micro warp drive turned on, right? Uh, it's a double-edged sword. So if they don't have their micro warp drive turned on, and they're traveling at let's say 200, 300, they're going to take max damage from this and reduce damage from this. But if they turn their micro warp drive on to try and outrun your missiles, which remember they can't, uh, then they're going to take reduced damage from the max velocity or the explosion velocity. And they're gonna take, okay, they're gonna take reduced damage from the explosion velocity, and they're gonna take max damage from the explosion radius, which should come out to roughly the same. So it doesn't matter what they do, they're gonna take the same amount of damage, which is gonna be about an eighth of the damage that you're actually doing, which is gonna be about 800 alpha. So if you look at the fire rate on these, uh, where is it? Where is it? Where is it? Fire rate. Fire rate. Come on. Come on, where is it? Guess I gotta look at the guns. Yeah, there we go. Fire rate, 4.33, so four and a half seconds, right? So every four and a half seconds, 
you're going to be applying 8, 000, or 800 alpha, which means that you can almost three shot anything off the field that is small enough to actually give a shit about your signature radius. Uh, of, so basically anything that's small enough to not take max damage from these missiles, not take 6,000, is going to take about 800. So that means you're going to have three shot any type of tackle, any type of frigate, uh, any type of drone, if you actually want to shoot at the drones for some reason. That would be dumb, but don't ever do that because you can kill them with these. But basically anything in the game that's too small to apply max damage to, you're going to three shot off the field uh, with this fit. Yeah. Uh, okay, so then you're going to have your... Pith MC type medium shield booster, which is going to give you 556 uh, HP. So this is the only thing you're going to have turned on while you're ratting. And I'll show you which sites that you want to do and which sites you don't want to do with this ship. So here we go. Then we have the large uh, cap battery two. Now you can you can downgrade this or just remove it. It doesn't matter. See, boom, you can remove that. Um, yeah, you're not going to be cap stable no matter what. So. You're not going to have these turned on all the time either, so there we go, do that, do that, do that, you're not going to have, oh yeah, that's right, you're not going to have that turned on all the time, you're not going to have that turned on all the time, so there we go, you're still cap stable. Then you're going to have the shield boost amplifier too, multi-spectrum shield hardener too, you know, you can faction this, or just leave it the way it is, yeah, that's fine. You can basically bling this thing out as much as you want. Um, the only thing you got to be very wary of are hot droppers. So anything comes in that looks like it's can drop a cyano, covert ops, or regular, you just want to get off the field as soon as possible. You kind of want to do that anyway. You want to avoid a fight if you can. That's just the, the ratting code. Um, but if you do happen to get caught, don't worry. Just turn around and no. I usually hunt this guy down and kill him, but I guess I'm going to let him get away today. It's your lucky day, Reuben Boobin. Alright, so let's, uh, let's head out in the field. Show you what this puppy can do. Uh, if you're wondering why I'm heading out while there's a Newton uh, system, he's going to leave pretty soon because he sees that I'm here. And this guy really doesn't like to fight me. Come on, Reuben. You going to go through the system or you going to turn around and leave? Let's see if we can catch him on the uh, I-6 out. Oh, no, nope, there we go, he turned around. <laughs> I knew it. Fear is the greatest weapon of all. Now... Uh, okay, I don't have my probe window open. Let's do this, close this. Forsaken Den. Warp drive oh, active. Forsaken Hub. Yeah, Forsaken Hub. Okay, so you want to do the Forsaken Hubs. Uh, forsaken Hubs, very good payout, uh, very good loot drop, and they can spawn uh, 9 to 10s and 8 to 10s. Uh, yeah, I, th I don't know if they can spawn 10 to 10s. I don't think I've ever gotten one. Uh, they can also spawn the. Um, Domination or whatever faction battleship is in your space. So, yeah, they're very good sites. Nice, right, so basically turn that on, turn that on, that, that. Uh, I usually just keep this on because I'm going to be out of here in less than 20, 27 minutes. Yeah, so you kill a site in about 19, 18 minutes. Oh, shoot, I have the wrong. Uh, um, wait, do I have the wrong missile slot? No, okay, I have the auto-targeting. Okay, so when you're ratting, you want to use the auto-targeting, just for simplicity and because you're not wasting time between selecting each uh, enemy and hitting the, the target button. So now, this lasts about two minutes, roughly. So, yeah, I can go make a coffee, do whatever, come back in uh, two minutes, and then hit the button again. And this is basically what... Uh, Gullum ratting is like, and this is why I prefer it over um, carrier ratting. Carrier ratting's nice, you get about 20% better ticks, but uh, 
the Gullum here makes 25, 25 mil ticks. Um, plus, after two hours, you get a 50 mil payout of the ESS, which is fairly good. So you run, you can run up to, let's see, six, yeah, seven sites. You can run up to seven sites per uh, two hours. So three and a half sites an hour, essentially. And that gives you a payout of about 100 mil an hour, I believe. Yeah, yeah, it is. Yeah, it's 100 mil an hour. Yeah, so you're making 100 mil an hour tick. Uh, worth in ticks and ESS payout. And I think CCP is actually supposed to put an update out that increases that. So you could be making like 120 uh, once the update comes out per hour. Um, the ship cost itself is fairly cheap, 2.5 uh, billisk. And actually, I'll go over the drones here that I have. Um, this isn't the best drone fit. A module has run out of charges. You do want to use Republic Fleet Warriors because if there are frigates on the field, and you just want to get them out as soon as possible, um, like we are fighting drones that are weak to uh, explosive, but you want to fly whichever faction drone that has the highest uh, speed and tracking uh, in lights for your region. So if you're doing like drones, you want to do EM damage. If you're doing um, uh, Garissa space, you want to do kinetic and you know, so on and so forth. And then you also want to have some Hornet ECs in case somebody is like really hard to kill and they're just kind of holding you there, um, but they're alone. Then you can put the ECs on them while you align out and just try to break his lock on you so that you can warp off. So, uh, here we go. We have a neutral here. So I'm going to stick around and just see what he does. And if he does land on me, then I'll fight. Probably fight him. We'll see. Um, depends what he lands in. So I'm actually going to go ahead and switch to my Inferno Precisions. I'm going to align out. And uh, we'll see how this goes. So salvage drones are optional, you don't really need those in there. Um, yeah, so Nova auto-targeting, so whatever auto-targeting are good for your your area. Nova Fury cruise missiles here. And Inferno Precisions. Kind of want to use the Inferno Precisions, they just seem to be the best for your PvP. So I'm going to leave this one rat on the field because I don't want too many rats showing up. They tend to go after battleships uh, before they go after small tackle. Okay, so the neutral left. So he probably de-scanned me down and then realized that I was going to be too much for him to handle. And then just went on his way. So, now go ahead and switch back to auto-targeting. Yeah, so all in all this is fairly good. So, okay, another thing to uh, mention is that when you're out ratting, in a Marauder, uh, especially the Golem. You don't want to put any mobile tractor units down or mobile depots, or have any drones out while you're ratting. Uh, or especially when a neutral comes in the system, because believe it or not, the drones and the mobile depots are easier to scan down than your actual ship. So this ship here is harder to scan down than any of those objects. I think it's much harder. So yeah, don't put any of those down until after you've done the site. And I'm not going to finish this, I'm just going to probably just warp off and dock up for now. Yeah, so you don't want to put any of those down, or have your drones out. Oh, he came back. Okay, well, let's do this then. So we're going to align to a safe spot because you're going to have a timer when you go to dock up, so you're not going to be able to dock up right away. And I'm assuming he just realized that he has friends or something and he's going to come back and try to get me, so... We're going to go ahead and warp to location, boom. And I think I put a bubble at this spot. Drive active. So if somebody tries to warp in on me, they're going to land in the bubble and I can blap them. Yeah, it's another cool, uh, neat trick. If you have a safe spot, um, you can put a bubble down. Now the bubble will make it easier for them to scan me, but that's kind of the whole point. I want them to warp into the bubble. 
because then they're directly on top of me. I can smart bomb them as well as hit them with my, my rockets. Okay, so the bubble's gone. Uh, I think the bubble I placed down like three days ago, so it despawned. It was only tech one small. Um, all right. So, yeah. Yeah, that's actually a really good trap for killing hunters, by the way. So you make a safe spot in the middle of space, you put a small bubble in it, and then you wait there in like a smart bombing material um, is especially good. Because even if they try to warp to you at 100 or something, unless they're in a saber, or not a saber, an um, interceptor, or something that's nullified, they're going to go directly into the bubble and then you can smart bomb them and kill them. So I think this guy's probably trying to scan. Yeah. Oh, he's in an Asteros. Okay, yeah, so he's just trying to do sights. Alright, we're gonna go ahead and dock up then. But yeah, that's a cool trick also. Warp drive active. So our timer is now gone. We can go ahead and dock up safely. And uh, that's it. So I've got a small montage that uh, I made for this. So you can go ahead and watch that. It's gonna be quite amusing. And uh, thanks for, for everything. Go ahead and subscribe to my channel if you want more videos like this. And uh, feel free to comment. I usually return. And uh, I always like reading your guys' comments. Thank you very much. Bye bye. Just come